this video, we're going to see a couple more examples of solving separable equations uh, using antiderivatives. So we're going to start on the left here. We have dy over dx is equal to 6x squared divided by 2y plus the cosine of y. Now, a couple of things to notice here. The x variable occurs only in the numerator of this fraction, and the y variable occurs only in the denominator of this fraction. This is really good news for us because it means that we can separate the numerator and the denominator here using multiplication. If I multiply both sides of this equation by the entire denominator here, that will completely remove all of the y's from the right-hand side and move them all to the left-hand side. It's going to separate our variables. And you can notice at the same time the dx over here on the left side could be multiplied to the right side, and then we'll have all of the y's on the left with the dy and all of the x's on the left with the dx. So that's what we're going to do. First, I'm going to multiply by the denominator here on the right-hand side. We're going to get uh, 2y plus the cosine of y multiplied by dy dx equals to 6x squared on the right side. Then I can multiply both sides by the dx, so we get uh, 2y plus the cosine of y times dy equals 6x squared times dx. And now at this point, algebraically, I have moved all the y's and dy's to one side all of the x's and dx to the other side. Now I can take an antiderivative here. So I'm going to apply an antiderivative to both sides of this expression. Now each of these is an integral problem that we can solve. We can take the antiderivative of 2y with respect to, dy, to y here. This is going to give us y squared. And the antiderivative of the cosine of y will be sine of y. Once again, I'm going to get two constants of integration here, so I'm just going to have moved them all to the right-hand side and not worry about the, uh, you know, the, true, the exact value of each one. They're combining into some arbitrary constant. So on the right-hand side, we're going to have the antiderivative of 6x squared. Uh, raise the power to 3 and divide by 3. We're going to have 6x cubed over 3, which is equal to 2x cubed. And here we have our constant of integration. So now we have an expression where we have y all, all by itself on one side, x by itself on the other side, and no differentials anymore, right? No derivative anywhere in the problem. Unfortunately, we can't isolate the variable y in this case. There's no way to get y by itself here when you have a, uh, a power function added to a trig function, right? There's no way we can combine those in any way, unfortunately. So this is a case where the solution to the differential equation can't be written explicitly. Explicitly would be if we had something like y equals and then, you know, something there, right? Uh, that's, this would be an explicit solution. So what we have is called an implicit solution. There are still, uh, you know, x and y values that make this equation true, and you can plot these. You absolutely can. Uh, pick x values and find y values that make the equation true, it's just not quite as straightforward as one variable being a function of the other. Okay, uh, on to the second differential equation here. We have y prime is equal to x squared times y. Now in this case, we have this written in Newton's prime notation, where the prime means the first derivative. Um, but in order to use this idea of separability, we want to use the Leibniz notation dy over dx so that we can treat it like a fraction and split up our differentials. So the very first step, whenever you see a differential equation written in Newton's notation, is to rewrite it in Leibniz's notation. The extra benefit of this is that Isaac Newton is really mad whenever you don't use his notation. So, all right, now let's see if we can solve this equation. Once again, our goal is to do something like what we did right here. Move all of the y terms to one side and move all of the x terms to the other side. So you'll notice that uh, the dx is in the denominator on the left side. In order to get it not in the denominator, I would have to multiply it and it would move to the right side. So that tells me that I should have all of my x terms on the right side of this equation. And since dy is already in the numerator, I can leave that there and move all the y terms to the left side. 
So that's my plan. I'm going to multiply by dx on both sides. So we get dy is equal to x squared y dx. And then I'm going to divide by y on both sides so that we get 1 over y dy is equal to x squared dx. Okay, now I have the equation separated. I'm going to apply my antiderivative to both sides. On the left, we have the antiderivative of 1 over y dy. This becomes the natural log of the absolute value of y. And on the right side, we've got a power function. The antiderivative of x squared will be x cubed over 3 plus our constant of integration. All right, now in this case, we actually can try to solve for y here. If we take an exponent on both sides, e to the power of each side here, we can cancel out that natural log. So we'll have the absolute value of y is equal to e to the power of x cubed over 3 plus our constant of integration. All right, if the absolute value of y is equal to this thing, and by the way, this right-hand side is guaranteed to be positive because whenever you take e to any power, positive or negative, you always get a non-negative, or not even non-negative, you always get a positive number. You can never get zero and you can never get a negative. Uh, it's a nice fact about the exponential function there. So if the absolute value of y is equal to this right-hand side, then y itself could be equal to either the positive or negative version of the right-hand side here. And so when we want to write our solution, we'll need a plus or a minus. So rewriting over here, uh, y itself is going to be equal to plus or minus e to this power, uh, x cubed over 3 plus our constant. Now, uh, one thing that we know about uh, exponents is that if you have an addition in the exponent, you can split this up into a multiplication of the two things. y is equal to plus or minus e to the power of c multiplied by e to the power of x cubed over 3. And if c is a constant, then e to the power of c is also a constant. So this whole thing here can just be represented by some value k. Uh, so we can write as our final solution here, y is equal to k times e to the power of x cubed over 3. And k here could be either positive or negative. Uh, and in fact, k could even be 0. Because if y is equal to 0, this differential equation is also true. right? Imagine we actually had y equals to 0. Uh, that's a perfectly valid solution to this differential equation here. No matter what x is, 0 times anything will be 0 on the right side, and the derivative of 0 is also 0. So this makes the equation 0 equals 0, which is true. So k can be any positive value, any negative value, or 0. So k can be any real number. So the set of all solutions to this differential equation is all functions that are a constant times e to this particular power, x cubed over 3. All right, one thing you will have noticed in all of these solutions is that we have a constant of integration somewhere buried in the solution, right? Meaning that there's not only one solution to a differential equation, but in general what we call a family of solutions. Any number can be placed here for k, and it will still be a valid solution to this original equation. Take its derivative, Multiply by x squared, uh, multiply this thing by x squared, you'll get the same value. All right, in the next video, we're going to start talking about orthogonal trajectories, which is one application of differential equations.